It was late Monday night when I sat on the push, with my pants around my ankles, listening to people laugh at me. They thought it was all funny, especially the fact that I had no idea about anything. How could a guy not know that his wife was cheating on him and doing it right under his nose? Colin Wilson, who said he screwed my wife, was telling his friend Ben Kramer how he seduced her at a party last week. It was at this party that I was called to investigate a break-in at a local art gallery. I was only gone for about two hours, but I was back before the evening was over. I found my wife at a table with three other people, one of whom was Colin Wilson. The other couple sitting there was his boss and his wife. My name is Brian Sexton, and I am an insurance investigator for a world-renowned insurance company that deals exclusively with high-value property clients. You probably don't know her name as we catered to a very exclusive clientele. I got into it straight out of college and have been with them for over 15 years. I am 37 years old and in the prime of my life. My job is to investigate the circumstances of incidents where there may be a large compensation claim. Most of the time it's routine, but sometimes things get pretty exciting. I investigate mostly thefts and robberies, but occasionally car accidents if more than one or two of our vehicles are involved. I'm very good at it and I have a reputation in my industry. I am often rented out to other companies, but at a high price. I often have to go away, but never for long. And if a lengthy investigation is required, I have people to stay on site and get the job done. I have been married to Allison for 14 years, and we have two wonderful children, Regina, 10, and Christina, 8. Allison is a year older than me and works at the same company as secretary to Bill Quinn, the company president. She and I met and got married before she joined the company, but when she lost her job, I wanted her to try to work for my company. We had to get permission from HR because it was against company policy in terms of nepotism, but since I was a valued employee, they agreed to hire her. Fortunately, Bill Quinn was looking for a new secretary, and Allison had more than five years of experience as a personal assistant at a giant corporation. He interviewed her and immediately liked her. She was accepted as his personal secretary. The two people I mentioned earlier, Colin Wilson and Ben Kramer, were insurance specialists who wrote policies for large companies or individuals with very high-value assets. For me, they were only acquaintances, not friends. Both worked for Jerry Scogins, a good guy who was a good friend of mine. I reported directly to Bill Quinn and worked independently most of the time, but occasionally received interesting assignments from Jerry. The conversation I overheard took place a week after the party, I went to the toilet to relax and sat there for a while, pushing and sweating. I ate some scallops for lunch a day ago and thought they might have been a little stale. While I was cursing my fate, Colleen and Ben walked in. They seemed to ignore the closed booth door and began talking about the party. That's when Colin started bragging to Ben about his latest conquest. I listened to the story of increasing pain in my intestines that had nothing to do with cramps and sweat from bad fish. How did you get into her pants? I didn't think she was that kind of woman. Go ahead, tell me, since I wasn't there. We did a couple of dances and she was pretty friendly, but Brian was there and she just smiled when I asked her to come to my office. She said Brian wouldn't be too happy if she did that. So what then? What did you do? Well, I talked her into having a drink with me at the bar while Brian was dancing with Judy, his secretary. I asked the bartender to make me a double shot and then switched our drinks while she was talking to someone. This was the easy part. I just wanted to get her a little drunk so I could touch her on the dance floor. You know, take what you can get. Yeah, but Brian was still there, so what could you really do? Hey, wait a minute. Didn't you arrange for his departure? Hell no. It was just dumb luck. We were doing a quick dance when he came over to tell her he needed to go away for a while. She wanted him to take her home first but he told her to stay and have fun, as he was sure that he could return soon. She wasn't too interested in it, but she stayed. She sat with me, Jerry, and his wife. And what happened next? Finally get to the good part. Well, Brian left and I ordered her another drink. I made Joe do the double again, and she didn't notice the difference. We did a couple of slow dances, and by then she was almost out of it. She hung on me while I grabbed her ass, 
and a couple of times she pressed herself against my tool and giggled. I figured one or two more drinks would be it. I took her to another one, and she drank it like a pro. I can see exactly how this is happening. Well, yes, another double, and she felt dizzy. I invited her to go outside to get some air, and she readily agreed. I took her to my car, and we sat in the back seat. She was almost gone, so I slid my hand under her skirt. In general, she isn't against it. She begged me to give away everything I had. I gave it to her and she liked it. It was delicious. I can't believe Allison did this. She never seemed capable of cheating on her husband or giving in to someone like you. Are you sure this really happened? I'm not feeding you crap. I have a date with her next Saturday when she usually goes to get her hair done. She said she would meet me and that I would book a hotel room. I'm going to have sex with her all day, you'll see. Well, I envy you, dude. Allison is one hot ass. I always wondered what Brian did to deserve her. Maybe you can set me up with her when you get tired of her. Maybe we'll see. For now, don't even think about this conversation. I don't want anything to go wrong. Fine? No problem. They both came out of the toilet while I sat there trying to keep my stomach from coming out through my mouth. I couldn't believe what I just heard. Could this really be happening? I began to remember that evening. It was almost 11 when I returned to the party and Allison was sitting with Colin Julie and Jerry Scogans. Allison didn't seem to be drunk when I sat down and was talking to Julie about the kids. Colin spoke to me, but didn't stay more than a few minutes before leaving. I noticed Allison say something to him, but I didn't think anything of it. The only thing that was strange that evening was that when we got home, Allison wanted to make love. It wasn't that unusual, but she usually didn't want to do it this late. She was especially hot that night. Guilt? Repentance? Maybe. A week passed after the party. And I didn't see any difference in Allison or her behavior. She never brought up the fact that I left during the party or what she did when I was not there. I asked her and she said that she danced with Colin and Jerry, but mostly just watched. She and Julie talked about school and the play the kids were in, and that was it, she said. She would have preferred to come home when I left, she said. I decided to watch her more carefully. Hey, baby, do you have any plans for this Saturday? I was going to play golf, if that's okay. I looked at her face for her reaction. This Saturday, right after lunch, I'll get my hair done. This will take me at least an hour or an hour and a half. Where will you go to play golf? So was she going to get her hair done? How does Colleen know about this if she didn't tell him? I didn't even know this. It seemed like everything was too real. I think of the country club. I'll see if Ben Kramer can join me. I think he and Jerry are dicks, don't they? I have no idea. I know Jerry does, but I don't know Ben or his wife very well, so I don't know. Me too. Hey, what about Colin Wilson? You talked to him at the party, didn't you? He might as well go too. Allison turned and looked at me strangely. She paused before answering. Why do you want to go with him? He, excuse the expression, is an asshole. I had to dance with him a couple of times at a party, but he really creeped me out. He is still a fruit. Now I was wondering, is she trying to talk me out of asking him if he would go with me? Or is she trying to convince me that she doesn't like him? Either way, it was very unusual for her to talk about someone else like that. Oh, I don't know much about him, but he's Ben's friend, and they seem to share everything. Maybe this is a bad idea. I'll just call Phil and Charlie. They always want me to join them. That sounds like a better plan. Stay away from Colin. You shouldn't mess with him. Okay, he's not on my list anymore. So you don't mind golf? I don't mind, because I'll still be absent. Why don't we have dinner at the Cypress Inn restaurant later? I'll have a nice haircut, and you'll relax after playing golf. You can take me out and be proud of me. I can give Chrissy and Jean to my parents. I agreed and we planned to meet at home at half past five on Saturday to get ready. If I had been careful, I could have gotten all the information I needed to divorce her ass that day. It would be very nice to tell her everything over dinner in one of the most beautiful places in the city. The next day at work, I went down to the control room to get some things I needed to stalk my wife and her lover. I decided to take one of the company's surveillance vans. I could leave it in the company parking lot until Saturday morning when I went golfing. 
I grabbed two small transmitters to put in her purse and car, and one of the small GPS units I could install in her car. This will tell me exactly where she was at every moment. The van was also video capable, but I couldn't decide what to do with it. Since Colin said they were going to a motel, there's no way I could film. Maybe I could put the camera in her jacket, but only if I knew for sure that she was going to wear it. I could try, but I wasn't sure. When she goes somewhere, I can follow her through the GPS unit. The surveillance van can tap into his signal so I can monitor her location on the van's grid. It was programmed with local street maps so I could locate the actual address within 30 meters. The audio transmitters picked up any voices and I could record them in the van. This can all be done automatically, so I don't even have to be in the van. All I have to do is leave it a mile from where she was. Not weak. I plan to spend the rest of the week just observing. I was very good at this as this was what I did for a living. I looked at Ben and Colin, but didn't see anything unusual. I usually visited my loving wife at least once a day, but now I visit a little more often. I still hadn't seen anything to make me suspicious, but I decided to try to see what I could get from Ben. He was working on policies for a large factory complex, and I used to spend some time just looking at the site and putting together contingency plans for a possible disaster. This was called risk analysis and was part of any risk insurance process. That tourist day I stopped at his desk across from Colleen. He was working on his project. Hello, Ben. Today I'd like to take a look at the Baxter plant plan. Do you have time to take me? He looked up with a distracted expression on his face until he realized what I was talking about, and then he simply shrugged. Of course, I can go any time. I still need to go back there to take some pictures. When do you want to go? How about an hour or so? Great. I'll stop along the way and pick you up at your desk. Afterwards, I said a few more words, and as I turned the corner, I looked back just in time to see a grin between Ben and Colin. They looked at me the whole time until I left their sight. Interesting? Assholes. I decided I was going to make Ben pay. He wasn't guilty of anything other than colluding with Colin and making rude remarks about my wife, but he knew about the plan and decided to watch Colin scam me. So he was just as guilty as far as I was concerned. Ben pulled up next to me about an hour later as planned and we left in my SUV. I inserted one of the small transmitters into the car console. It can capture any conversation in or around the SUV. I wanted to have on record some of what I was going to say to Ben, something that would only be between him and me. As we left the parking lot and began the 25-minute drive to Baxter, I spoke. So tell me, Ben, did you enjoy last week's party? I wasn't there, Brian. I was on a trip, so I missed all the fun. What was interesting, Ben? How did Colin fuck my wife? Is this what you missed? Ben was stunned and didn't know what to say. He stuttered and shifted in his chair and actually reached for the door handle until he realized where he was. Finally, he fell and looked at me. How do you know? All I know is what Colin told me. I don't even know if this is true. Do you think he would lie about something like that? Do you think he made it up? I don't think so, no. But how did you know? You weren't even there, from what I heard. You've been gone for a couple of hours? That's when everything happened. Colin said he got her drunk and then took her to his car. As far as I know, this is not your concern. I just want to know what else Colin told you. Does he have any plans for another meeting? This was to see if I could trust everything this idiot told me. He said they were going to do it on Saturday, when she was supposed to get her hair done. This time he was going to rent a room. That's all I know, honestly, Brian. Well, I want to thank you for being a good friend and telling me this, I said sarcastically. I know you wouldn't want to be part of something like that. You were going to tell me anyway, weren't you? Yes, sure. I like you and Allison. I wouldn't want something like that to happen to you. Colin is a real jerk. Sorry, you made me think. I feel like a real ass. Hypocritical piece of crap. What did he say? Oh yeah, couldn't he fuck her after Colleen was done with her? With these words, I reached into the console and turned off the recorder. This was what I wanted to have later. What I wanted to say now was not written down. It's not a problem, Ben. As long as you do everything as I tell you, you'll be fine. Fail me, and you will be in a world of pain. 
Is it clear? Ben just shook his head affirmatively. He got the point. One more thing, Ben. Nothing from our conversation should reach Colin. He doesn't know that I know, and you won't tell him. If I find out you said anything to him, I'll beat the crap out of you first, and then I'll make sure you get fired, and it's known that you can't be trusted. Do you understand me? You know, I have ways to bug you and Colin so I'll know if you mess up. I won't tell Colin anything. I won't even talk to him if you want. No, no. Do what you always do and let him talk. That's all you need to do. There is no problem if you even agree with him. Now I know the truth. Just remember what I said and everything will be fine. We didn't talk much after that and spent the next two hours standing there without saying a word. He did his job and I did mine. I had what I needed and Ben would be left out too. He just didn't need to know right now. This week was one of the longest of my life. I kept a close watch on my wife, but she was not doing anything unusual. Wednesday evening arrived and the children went to their school dance class for children, which was supposed to end around half past nine. I was sitting in the living room watching TV when Allison came in and sat on my lap. She put her arms around my neck and started pressing her ear to my ear. We have about two hours before I go pick up the kids. Don't you want to make love? Although I was a little disheartened and angry about what was happening, I was also human and a man. Against my will, I became aroused. I grabbed her around the waist and pressed her tightly to me. I kissed her tenderly. Take me upstairs to our bedroom, right now. I want you, and I want it now. I needed no prompting and followed her up the stairs to our bedroom, all the while watching her cute ass. On the way, we started to undress. And then there was mind-blowing sex between us. When it was all over, then for some time we simply lay in each other's arms, not feeling the need to speak or disrupt the mood with action. This was love at its finest. For a while I forgot my doubts and fear that this could very well end for us. I wanted to forget and believe that it was all a lie, but she wasn't meant to be. That was quite nice, husband. I think we need to do this more often, don't we? We seem to be out of sync for a while. Let's not let this happen again. Fine. Fine. I'll definitely work on this. How much time and do we have a minute to take a quick shower? I have to pick up the children after nine, but we can pick them up later if you want now, or wait until our date on Saturday night. I can ask the children to go to their mothers for the night. How about this? I'm on a date. Anything else on Saturday? How is it okay? You have golf and I have a meeting with the hairdresser. Then, love, we have a dinner date, and after that, I'll be yours whenever you want. And you better do lots and lots of that for me. Do you have a better offer now? No, no. Okay, then we're in touch. Allison quickly got dressed and went to get the children. I lay there for a while, just remembering what had just happened. How could this woman make love to me like that if she had sex with that shit-eating Colin Wilson? I knew she was smart, but was she also a good actor? Something was definitely wrong and I was going to find out on Saturday. While she was gone, I checked the transmitters and found that they were working fine. I planned to install them Friday night in her car and Percy. I had everything ready except for one more meeting with Ben Kramer. I needed to find out what hotel Colin had booked at. Ben will find out for me, or I'll do something he won't like. The next morning I called Ben and asked him to meet me in the third floor cafeteria. He agreed without comment, and when he came in, I was sitting at one of the tables. He joined me without saying anything, and I quickly got to the point. Ben, my friend, I need you to find out from Colin where he plans to take Allison on Saturday. I need the name of the motel and where it is located. All you have to do is catch him somewhere alone and ask him. Tell him that you think he's feeding you crap, and that if he tells you where he's taking her, you'll believe him. I smiled at Ben as he tried to figure out how he could do what I asked. He was afraid that I would do something if he didn't. Finally, he agreed, but asked how I would know if I would tell him where they would meet. I told him not to worry about it. I have ways. With that, he walked away, but not before I hugged him and tucked one of the transmitters under the collar of his jacket, reminding him of our agreement. He was so scared of me that he never felt anything.
It was almost invisible, held in place by glue, and he didn't notice it. I returned to my office and turned on the receiver. The place was buzzing and let me know that Ben was back at his desk and talking to Colin. I heard him ask Colin to meet him in ten minutes in the copy room. Colin agreed, and then nothing happened until Ben stood up to meet Colin. I went back to listening. What happened, buddy? Do you have problems with politics? I'm the best you know. Nonsense, Colleen. I was on set with Brian yesterday, and he doesn't seem to have any problems at home. I asked him if he was okay, and he said something about how it couldn't be better. I think you're feeding me crap about his wife. Hey, dude, nothing but the truth. I wouldn't lie about something like that. Why do you not believe me? Where are you taking her on Saturday? You said motel. What motel? Maybe if you show me the receipt for the room or something, I'll believe you. Otherwise, I think you're screwed. Oh, yeah? I already have a reservation at the Skyview Motel on Statler Street for Saturday night. I can check in at 2 o'clock in the afternoon and she will be there by 2.15. How do you like this fact? You can call Skyview and check my name on the reservation. Is this enough for you? Do you want to use my cell phone? Okay, I think this will do. I really envy you, Colleen. Allison is truly something. I hope you know that she has a good marriage with Brian that you are trying to ruin. You better be careful and think about it. It's not my problem. If she's ready, so am I. Anyway, how good can a marriage be if she wants sex with me? That was all that was worth hearing, so I turned off the receiver and just let it record the rest. Now I was almost ready to believe everything. I was really hoping that Colin would back down and admit that he made it all up, but now he had confirmed the number and was just waiting. At least I had the address so I could connect it to the equipment in the van and let the rest work automatically. Maybe I could just park the van there on a Friday night, turn on the equipment on Saturday around noon, and forget about it. Everything else will be done automatically, and I won't need to be nearby. I didn't want to see or hear my wife as she tore my heart out and stuffed it in the toilet. Now I was lost. I could only continue and try to get what I needed to get back at her, Colin and Ben. The first thing I did was call the motel, and they confirmed that Colin was registered. At least, part of it was true. Now I just had to wait until Friday evening. But then I had a thought. What if I could take a photo of them entering the motel room? I decided to visit the motel that day and see what I could do. I walked into the Skyview Motel office and waited for the clerk. He was an unscrupulous character, which was good for me. Honesty is not what I was looking for right now. Hi, friend. I am an investigator for an insurance company, and I need information. I have an ID and a warrant for you. With that, I quickly flashed my badge and handed him a genuine document, which to most people looked like a search warrant. It was a fake, but I was counting on the fact that he was not smart enough and that he would be easy to deceive. The hundred dollars I slipped on him didn't hurt either. Yes, sure. What do you want to know? I asked him to confirm Colin Wilson's reservation and asked if he had a room number. He said no, so I asked if he could give him a room on the first floor overlooking Statler Street. He tricked and tickled until I slipped in another fifty dollars and finally gave me a room number that would allow me to shoot a video. I let him know about the van that would be parked on his property and he just shrugged and said it was no big deal. I thanked him again for his help and gave him another $50 for his silence. He gave me a devilish grin and put the bills in his pocket. After I left, I decided that I could now get the video I wanted by pointing the camera through the front window of the van, which I would park in front of their room. Now, I am packed. Friday at work was pretty tough for me. I didn't know what to do with myself, so I walked up to Bill Quinn's office under the pretext of talking about my visit to an art gallery that had been robbed. He didn't really need to know, but I wanted to see my wife. As I walked down the hallway, her face lit up when she saw me. She waved at me, beckoning me to her table, and I walked over. I really enjoyed the last few days. You see me more often than before. I'm not complaining, but what happened? Is there something going on that I should know about? Nothing like that, as far as I know. I just like seeing you, that's all. Is Bill inside? Me too. And yes, he's inside. Do you want to meet him? Yes, if it's possible. I need to talk to him about working at an art gallery. I went in and talked to Bill for a bit. 
Bill was very young to be a president, but I knew that he had made a reputation for himself some time ago. He launched this site, as well as most of the other places, and put them into operation. I knew he owned a good portion of the company. He had a wonderful wife named Naomi, whom I met several times. She looked like your typical trophy wife, blonde, slim, sexy as hell, and truly gorgeous. She and Allison were about the same age and talked often, and Bill and I were quite close. While I was there, I asked him point-blank what he thought of Colin Wilson. At his request, I often spoke about the work of other employees, as he insisted that I take on more responsibility as management, but the issue was mine. Why do you want to know about Colin? Is there something I should know about? I need you to tell me if one of my employees is having problems or causing problems. This is true? Well, I might have big problems with Colin. I don't really like him and Ben. Perhaps I may have more information for you this weekend. If everything works out as I expect, I'd like to be able to call you at home on Sunday if that's okay. Otherwise, I'll wait until Monday. Let's see. Until then, I'd prefer you not tell anyone about this. Fine. No problem. I'll wait. You know I trust your judgment on these things. You have always been fair in your assessments, and I respect that. I would just like you to consider taking the position of vice president that I offered you. As per your request, I still haven't mentioned this to Allison, but she should know about it. In fact, if you don't tell her soon, I will. I'm just waiting for the right time to bring this up. This means a lot of changes for us, so I wanted some time to think about it. I'll be sure to let you know next week. Is it coming? This is cool. So, are you finally going to look into it? I promise I will do it. I've been thinking about this a lot lately, so I need to make a decision soon for my own reasons. I walked out of his office, stopping to say a few words to Allison before heading towards Ben. At his desk, I stopped for a second and said loud enough for Colleen to hear that I thought his assessment of Baxter's performance was correct. I then gave him a thumbs up to let him know that I had heard his conversation with Colin. His eyes opened very wide, but like me, he said nothing. He just nodded. I patted him on the back as I removed the small transmitter. As before, he felt nothing. I finished the day without any distractions and waited for Allison before heading home. I wanted to tell her that I needed to take the van to someone and that I would catch a taxi to my car so I would be a little late. She kissed me goodbye and went home. I noticed Colleen standing by the door, watching her leave. He looked at me and turned away to return to his seat. I dropped the van, locked the camera in position, making sure it captured the right room the clerk gave me. I locked it and reminded the motel owner that I was supposed to leave it there for the night, and maybe tomorrow. I slipped him another $20 and thanked him for his understanding. He put the money in his pocket and shook hands. With that, I went home. Friday night at home was another surprise. Allison ordered pizza for the kids and said she made sure they went to Grandma's that evening. I asked why, and she said she enjoyed Wednesday night so much that she wanted to continue it tonight. Do I mind? Not so much. Well, Friday night was almost the same as Wednesday night, except we did something new. While I was enjoying it, I had a sickening feeling thinking about where she could have learned all this, but when I asked her about it later, she giggled and pulled a book out of her nightstand and showed me an article about making love after 35. I'll be damned if most of what we've been doing the last two nights wasn't there. I really enjoyed it that night. I tried to do everything she wanted me to do, and I succeeded. It took most of the night, but so what? I promised myself that I would take some Viagra. We lay next to each other, and I finally plucked up the courage to ask her where all this came from. Allison, I like what we do, and I really want to please you, but I have to ask, where does it come from? Why now? If I didn't trust you so much, I'd wonder if there might be a guilty conscience involved. Sorry, Bree. Naomi told me something last week that I can't repeat. I just keep thinking about us and the girls and our life together, and it makes me so happy sometimes that I just need to express myself. It turns out that I chose this path because I wanted to show how much you mean to me. I listened, and seeing her happy made my heart burn. But the next moment I wondered, if this is true, then how can she have an affair? Should I ask her? 
I'm glad you feel that way. Are you sure I make you happy enough? Are you satisfied with our lovemaking, or are you missing something and that is why you are doing all this new stuff? Tell me honestly. I love the way we make love, and you have always satisfied me in every way. I have no reason to want more, but I just don't want us to get into a rut where we get so used to everything that we let it become a routine with no interest. Can't you see it? Don't you want me to always be desired by you? You'll never have to worry about that. I love you and always will. I can't imagine anything ruining what we have. That's good because I won't allow it. You are mine, now and forever. We spent the rest of the night in each other's arms and woke up the same way. I was pleasantly exhausted, but wanted to shower with Allison. I shook her and pulled her into the shower with me. She went willingly and with mocking irritation. She complained bitterly about being taken out of her warm bed, but when I let her go, she didn't leave. We turned on the water and she quickly moved into the spray, turning to hold out her arms for me to join her. We lathered each other up all over and paid special attention to each other's more interesting things. Soon we both got horny and gave pleasure to each other. When I asked, she said she was ready for that day, but that she was expecting something more that night. With that, we finished showering and getting dressed. Early in the morning, I drove to the motel and made sure everything was ready. I set all the timers to start at 1 p.m. and made sure the audio recording would last at least five hours. The video was written to DVD and would take at least seven hours after compression. This will cover the entire day. I initiated the sequences and locked the van. When these two lovers enter their love nest, they will become the stars of my new film, and the first screening will make a very loud impression on everyone involved. I drove home to pick up my clubs and wish my beloved wife a good day. That day was terrible, in any case. I was playing golf with two guys I met at the club, and if my score was any indication, they must have felt like I was wasting my money on the club membership. I ended up buying beer for all of us, like a big loser. It was just after five when I drove to the van to make sure everything was okay. I looked around the room but didn't see any cars or any activity, so I assumed everyone had already left. Of course, I quickly called my home phone and Allison answered. I just told her I was on my way and hung up. Since the meeting time with Allison was so close, I drove home without reviewing the information I had collected. I really wanted to have this before dinner, but then I thought about our planned evening. Why not enjoy what she had to offer just one more time? After all, I enjoyed making love to her. And even if she cheated on me, it shouldn't ruin my evening. I thought about it but found that I was starting to choke again. Why is she doing this to me? I loved her more than I could imagine, and I didn't know how I would live without her. I knew that if I had the information I expected to see on the surveillance tapes, I would have to get a divorce. I loved her, but I couldn't accept her behavior. What about children? She was a good mother and she should have had custody. It would only be right. If she cheated, she must have had a reason that I didn't know about. She was a good person who did a bad thing. Okay? I could live with that. She could raise the children and I would pay child support. These were the thoughts that occupied my mind as I drove home to meet my wife. I wasn't sure I could survive the evening, but I had to try. I couldn't press charges against her until I had proof. There was a tiny voice in the back of my mind that constantly denied all the information I had so far. He insisted that something was wrong. I ignored him. Facts are facts. And soon I will have all the facts I need. At home, Allison had already showered and dressed. She said she would add the finishing touches when it was time to go out. In the meantime, I rushed to get ready and we were able to leave in time to meet our table reservation time. My wife was wonderful. She was always noticed when we entered the room. She was used to receiving glances from admiring men and simply ignoring them. But I noticed, and that always made me proud. Tonight was a reminder of what could have happened. She was also smart and played an excellent dinner partner. We discussed everything that a husband and wife discuss when they have free time and drank wine at dinner, more than me, since I was the driver. She really seemed to be flirting with me. My wife of 14 years and mother of my two girls made advances towards me. It almost broke my heart to realize that she could have spent hours having sex with another man that same day and was now flirting with her husband over dinner as we finished the dessert of chocolate mousse, 
preceded by some sorbet, we looked at each other and smiled. We were both ready to move into the bedroom at home that evening. I signaled to the waiter for the bill while Allison went to the restroom. We walked out hand in hand and walked to the car. As I turned onto the main street and headed toward our house, Allison walked up to me and leaned her head against my shoulder. She lifted her hand to remove one of my hands from the steering wheel and lowered it to my lap. With little prompting, I hugged her like we did when we were young and in love for the first time. She sighed and relaxed. We drove home like this, slowly but comfortably. At home, Allison was walking around the house, doing all those little preparations to get things done, and finally she looked at me. Shouldn't we go upstairs and pick up where we left off this morning? I think you owe me something since you only gave me a down payment earlier. Remember? I remember. You lead and I will follow. We quickly went upstairs to the bedroom and Allison stood in front of the bed. I stripped down to my boxers and socks. She took off her top and bra, leaving only one strand of pearls on. She reached out to remove it, but I stopped her hand. Leave them alone. You look so sexy standing here wearing nothing but the pearls around your neck. You are incredibly beautiful. I could watch you all night. This is something only you will see. I am completely yours, and I want you to do whatever you want with me. I want this night to be the first night of the rest of our lives together. Are you sure? Is this what you want? I wouldn't do anything to hurt you or make you feel ashamed. You should know that. I trust you completely and give myself completely to you. I love you with all my heart. At that moment, I believed her and knew that no matter what I found the next day, I would never give up on her. I would put it off until tomorrow. Tomorrow. Today I will love this woman with all my heart. That night we did something I had never done before. We made love in positions I didn't think possible, and she did things to me that I never thought possible. Sometimes she would laugh and quote the page number when I asked her about her fantasy. But it was a magical night. That night I learned to love talking, giving, and receiving. God, what a night! We fell asleep in each other's arms and woke up late Sunday morning. She didn't want to get up, so I suggested an encore of one of our favorites from the night before. She quickly agreed, and we made love one more time before finally getting up. Sunday meant she had to pick up the girls. I said that I needed to get there quickly to check on the van and that I would be home soon. She said she would probably stay at her mom's for a while before returning. This left me time to get the tapes from the van and see what they contained. I still had to check what I left in her purse and car, but that could be done later. She left, and I drove to the van. I got all the films and prints out with no problem and took the van back to the production facility. I called a taxi to pick me up and take me back to my car and drive home. The first thing I did was look at the GPS printout. She told me that her car was indeed on Statler Street, where the motel was. And from that moment, my heart almost stopped beating. I hoped against hope, but apparently it didn't happen. I almost didn't bother to go any further, but wanted to watch the video for myself to confirm. I turned on the TV and DVD player and inserted the DVD. I pressed play and sat down to have my heart broken. The picture was perfect and the room was in the center of the screen. I fast forwarded until I saw a car approaching and slowed down to normal speed. I saw clearly and distinctly Colin Wilson get out of the car and open the door to the room. He entered and closed the door. Rewind again until another car appears. I watched as a woman came out and walked to the door. She knocked and Colin opened the door. He smiled and the woman approached him. As she entered the room, she turned to look around and I saw her face. My heart started beating in my chest and my pulse was going through the roof. I paused the video, went back to the beginning, and watched it all the way through before extracting it. Well, I'll be damned, I said to myself. I had to immediately call Bill Quinn at home. There was one address I wanted to check, so I pulled my wife's address book out of my desk drawer. Sure enough, the address I needed was there, and it was what I thought it might be. I smiled to myself. Now I had all the information I needed to correct the situation. I called Bill at home, and he listened as I told him I needed to talk to him immediately. He told me to come, but I insisted that we meet somewhere else alone, just him and me. 
He was confused, but finally agreed to meet me at the TGIF restaurant near the office. We met there an hour later. Allison and the girls called and said they were going to dinner at her mom's and would be home later. This gave me the time I needed. I went to TGF and met with Bill. I wanted to talk to him before I showed him the DVD. I brought a portable player with a 9-inch screen and headphones so he could watch it there in privacy. He listened to me, and I could see him getting angrier and angrier. At first he refused to believe me and repeated this over and over again. Allison could never do anything like that. I played the tape of Ben's meeting with Colin and then outlined everything up to this point and made sure that Ben and Colin were completely involved in all of this. Ben was less to blame, but what he hid was the beginning of the end for both of them. When he heard Colleen talking about Allison, his face turned red and he became furious. He personally hired Allison and always treated her with respect, but I calmed him down and told him to watch the DVD before he said more. While he was watching the DVD, I saw his face fall. The pain was obvious, and I looked away to give him some privacy. He watched it all and finally stopped playing. He looked at me, and I waited until he was ready. When he calmed down, I made my only request. I want them both fired for violating the morals clause in their employment contracts, and I want them gone by Monday afternoon. If you agree with this, with all the information I have, you can do whatever you want. I will never mention this again. Bill looked at me in surprise, but began to smile. It was nice to see that smile. I didn't want him to be involved any more than necessary. I give you my word. This will be done first thing Monday, and I will personally escort them from the premises. They are like dead to me. I can also take further action, but it's better that you don't know what it might be. Fair enough. Fair. After that... I gave him a bag with all the surveillance data, with the exception of one small cassette, which I kept for myself. I needed it for my own purposes. My wife is in for a surprise. Bill and I talked for another hour or so and made some additional decisions that we'll take care of later this week. We shook hands as we parted, and Bill spoke to me again before I left. You are a good and decent person, Brian. I appreciate what you did and respect your actions in this matter. Things could have gone very badly if you were hotter. You have my gratitude and my respect. I felt better than I had for a while. I went home to see my family. They had no idea about the coming changes. That evening, everything was fine at home, and I was in a very good mood. Allison wanted to know what happened, but I told her she'd find out at work tomorrow. We were very tired from the night, or nights, before going to bed early just to sleep. Allison wanted me to hug her, and I was very happy to do so. We fell asleep in each other's arms, just like last night. Monday at work was full of activity. Allison called me at half past nine to find out what had happened. I feigned ignorance and asked for details. She said Bill asked her to invite Ben Kramer and Colin Wilson to his office immediately. She said that they were both there now, and that they were all screaming. I said that I was completely confused and asked him to let me know what else happened. She called 20 minutes later and said Bill had asked her to get security to come see him immediately. She covered the phone while talking to someone at her desk and then came back to tell me that Bill had asked security to escort Ben and Colin back to their desks. She quickly hung up and promised to call back. I didn't hear anything from her for the next hour until she finally called to say that both Ben and Colleen had been fired and that Bill wanted her to type up disciplinary letters for both. The reason for dismissal was to be a violation of the morals clause. She was very excited. This was the most unusual thing that had happened in her time as Bill's secretary. She demanded that we go to lunch together and discuss it. I agreed. Over lunch, Allison continued to talk about what had happened that morning. She told me they were both escorted out of the building and warned never to return. She said Bill had been angry and agitated all morning and even yelled at her once before quickly apologizing. Finally, she ran downstairs and asked me what it was. How do I know anything about this? Bill told me to ask you when I asked him. He said, ask Brian. He knows everything about it and he's the one who opened my eyes to a lot of things. That's what he said, so go ahead and shoot. Before I tell you what happened, I want you to listen to this tape first. I gave her a tape of Ben and Colin talking about the motel. She began to listen with interest, 
and then I watched as her face turned pale. She looked at me with her eyes wide open and her mouth making an oh, oh surprise shape. She listened to the end and then angrily took off her headphones. It is not true. He's lying. I never went to any motel with him and I never would. You can't believe this recording. Is this what you gave Bill? Does he believe this too? No, he doesn't believe Colin and neither do I. I have something to explain to you and I want you to just listen to me the whole time. You will do this. When I said I didn't believe the tape, she relaxed a little but was still angry and a little scared. She just nodded and indicated to begin. I heard Ben and Colleen talking a little over a week ago. Colin told Ben about you and him at the party. He said he got you drunk and then took you to his car and you had sex in the back seat. He was very detailed and described what he did and what you did and told it all to Ben. Ben listened and believed what he heard. You'll be glad to know that he was so impressed that he wanted Colin to include him in the next meeting. I was confused and tried to figure out how he could tell the truth. I couldn't believe it, but I had to be sure. Allison tried to interrupt me before I could continue, but I just didn't let her say a word. I needed to quickly uncover the truth before it exploded. I told Ben to talk to Colin, and Colin said he booked a motel room on Statler Street for Saturday afternoon when you were supposed to get your hair done. Then I was upset because how could he know about your meeting with the hairdresser if you didn't tell him? Do you remember I mentioned Saturday to you? We made plans for this evening. But he hasn't been there since. I calmed her down with a wave of my hand and trudged on. I decided to be absolutely sure it was really you, so I used one of the company's surveillance vans and set it up to track your car and take video of whoever came into the motel room. I asked the receptionist to give me the room number so that I would know where to record everything and watch it on Sunday. It was after this that I called Bill and gave him everything. Ben and Colleen were fired at my request. Allison listened to me as I told her this story. She was still confused and couldn't believe that I thought she was the one with him at the motel. But I wasn't with him. I styled my hair just like I told you. My salon is on Statler Street, but I didn't know about any motel. You do not believe me? I actually know who he was with because she told me herself. It was... I quickly continued, cutting her off before she could let it out. I had to convince her that I trusted her all along. This is not the truth, but the wisest thing. Yes, I said that I believed you, and I'll tell you why. I received a video of Colin that day, and he was indeed visited by a woman just as he claimed. The woman who visited him in that motel room was Bill's wife, Naomi. I first suspected this after talking to Jerry Scogans a few days ago. Since Colin claimed that he took you to his car that night, I asked Jerry if you were a little drunk, and he just laughed, telling me that you and his wife were drinking Coke that night and were inseparable and that you even asked her if she would stay with her to dissuade Colin from asking her to dance. He said it was clear you weren't interested in Colleen. When I asked him if Colin ever suggested taking you outside to get some air, he just laughed and didn't say anything. So you really had doubts about me? Did you set this up to spy on me? I'm not sure I like it. Did you really not trust me? Even after Wednesday evening, Friday evening, and again on Saturday... Of course I trusted you, but I couldn't explain Colin's story. Why would he say such things if they are not true? Then it occurred to me that he was trying to distract Ben from who was really with him. If Ben thinks it's you, he won't ask any more questions. I had no idea who it was, so I had to find out the truth. I just wish it wasn't Bill's wife. He was devastated. We talked some more and finally had to return from lunch. Allison accepted my story about trying to find out who Colin was with, and I left her alone. I did have some doubts, and I was ashamed of it, but I didn't regret knowing the truth. We were in a good place now, and I didn't want that to change. Things had calmed down at work that day, but Allison called me and told me Bill wanted her to come talk to him later that day. I said I really didn't know what it was about, and I think she believed me. I didn't hear any more until that evening at home. We ate dinner, the girls were active as usual with phone calls and bathroom appointments and other things only they understood, but they finally curled up and went to bed. We enjoyed the silence for a while until Allison told me what Bill wanted. 
He told me to think about how lucky I am to have a man like you as a husband. He talked about trust, respect, and love, what it all meant and what it was like to lose it. Finally, he told me about Naomi and what she had done and asked for my advice. And what did you tell him? Were you able to help him? I couldn't tell him what to do. I just asked him if he really loved her and if he could forgive her. If possible, I convinced him to talk to her and let her explain herself. But I told him that if he couldn't get past this and forgive her, then he should leave her right away. Don't drag your feet and don't let things become bitter. He listened to what I said, so maybe I helped. I'm sure it helped. He didn't mention anything about me? No, nothing more. Is there something else? Well, yes, there is. Bill offered me a position as the corporation's vice president of investigations. I would have complete control of all investigators in all offices around the world, and I would have a choice of where I lived. We could move to California or Florida or wherever we have a branch office with more than five investigators. I will still report to Bill, but only to him. This will mean a lot more money, as well as benefits, such as shares and other things. Allison screamed and jumped into my lap, hugging my neck. She couldn't let me go and couldn't stop laughing with joy. When did it happen? Is it because of what you did today? Is this some kind of reward? Now, who doubts whom? Bill suggested this to me six months ago. I just wasn't ready to think about it until now. I think the thought of losing everything I've done somehow made my choice more real. For a while last week I thought I might have lost you. This got me thinking. Brian, you could never lose me like this. I won't go to anyone else. It will never happen, and you will never think like that again. Can you hear me? Never again. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you, and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.